get spooked, it's only black and white. For Halloween this year, I figure it's time I step away from the lesser known games and talk about one of the most storied franchises ever, Castlevania. Castlevania is one of the all-time great video game series. One of the longest running ever, it rubs elbows with legendary decade-spanning series like Mario, Zelda, Metal Gear, but it is also a series known for its drastic evolutionary changes. There's that Vintagevania, of course Metroidvania, and well, I guess God of Vania. Its 30-year catalog has something for everyone, but here's some food for thought. There have only been four Vintagevania games released since the series took a turn with Symphony of the Night in 1997, 16 years ago. Rebirth, Dracula X Chronicles, Chronicles, and Legends. And when you get technical, three of those are remakes, which makes Castlevania Legends for the Game Boy the last original vintage Castlevania. Now, despite being technically remakes, those last two were incredible, and setting aside the fact that I loved me the hell out of some Metroidvania, this was still a pretty depressing realization. This new Konami logo has never graced a vintage Castlevania, but it's hard to linger on this thought because there's a wealth of vintage Vania to play. No matter where the series goes in the future, nothing will change what made those games great. However, one stretch of games that is often overlooked is the original Game Boy Trilogy. Not counting Kid Dracula, that's for another time. Castlevania Adventure, Castlevania II, Belmont's Revenge, and Castlevania Legends deserve to be talked about for their historical significance and because one of these is an oft overlooked gem among vintage Vania. I guess I'm not really stepping away from lesser known games, but whatever. You can't forget about the little guys. And shit, even I'm guilty of forgetting about our giant portable friend here. So. Hope you don't mind, Ben, because I'm pulling out my GameCube Game Boy player, my Super Game Boy, and we're talking about the Castlevania Game Boy Trilogy. Let's start at the beginning, all the way back at the year the Game Boy came out in 1989 with Castlevania Adventure. Castlevania Adventure is a game that has aged so poorly, it dares you to justify its existence. Like, this must have been good at some point, right? It had to have been. How else could such a fucking terrible Castlevania game have been made? Castlevania is not a series without its missteps, but Adventure may be the franchise's worst entry. But like I said, this game is mainly guilty of aging poorly, though this doesn't magically earn a recommendation in 2013. You see, the original Game Boy did not offer a very clear image. Images bled terribly when displaying motion. This made games like Super Mario Land more difficult than they should have been. Mario was tiny, and the game moved very quickly. This was the case for a lot of early Game Boy games. It was simply a pain in the ass to play. However, here comes Castlevania Adventure. Sprites are big and detailed, and most importantly, move slowly. There isn't hardly any image bleed, and it's a much more pleasing experience, perfect for car rides and school recess. This was the late 80s and early 90s. The novelty of having Castlevania on the go whenever you wanted was insane! That alone was enough to make Adventure a hit, eventually being re-released as a player's choice. Too bad nearly everything else about the game is terrible. Belmont, this time Christopher, moves incredibly slow, too slow. But things like bats and bouncing projectiles do not. Mix that with lousy hit detection and you have a toxic blend of shitty gameplay. I cannot tell you how much I hate these assholes. Your whip powers up beyond the NES games, giving you a fireball shot on the third upgrade. Too bad taking damage downgrades your whip. All it takes is two hits from a stream of rolling eyeballs and you are suddenly stranded with the weak ass standard leather whip. There are no sub weapons. It's almost heartbreaking to imagine a vintage Vania without at least the holy water, but this flaw goes way beyond nostalgia because the Belmonts are not a clan known for their dexterity, and these weapons leveled the playing field. The fireball upgrade is an enormous help, but again, very difficult to hold on to. However, no sub weapons means hearts actually fill up your health. Man, I'm really reaching for positives here. The jumping in this game is simply terrible, even by vintage Vania standards. This stretch here at the end of level 1 is so unnecessary and frustrating, and it only gets worse on the third level. This whole level is basically a marathon of platforming. It's insanely difficult. With enough practice, I could have probably mastered this section, but this game is not worth my patience. I'm gonna level with you folks. Most of the games I've reviewed, I, for better or for worse, have beaten. However, I have never beaten Castlevania Adventure, and I probably never will. 
On the other hand, there are only four levels, and not liking three of a game's four levels is basically saying this game is at least 75% garbage. I feel totally comfortable not recommending this game. But okay, pause vibes. There are actually two things that Adventure totally gets right. Again, the absence of sub weapons means hearts actually refill your health, and the other is it has an absolutely amazing soundtrack. The quality of Castlevania Adventure's soundtrack is staggeringly disproportionate to the quality of the game. It might be the starkest contrast in video game history. The melodies are gorgeous and catchy and perfectly recognizable as Castlevania. They're so brilliantly composed they almost make me enjoy this game, but not quite. I'm sure it made Konami a couple of bucks back in the day. It features a brilliant soundtrack and inspired a phenomenal remake. Other than that, there is no reason for Castlevania Adventure to exist in your life. Even with restore points on a 3DS, it is a terrible game. Don't play it. Instead, play Castlevania 2 Belmont's Revenge. <laughs> Forget Simon's Quest, this is the Castlevania 2 you need to know. Belmont's Revenge is the hidden gem in this collection in an absolutely fantastic Castlevania game. It has all the trappings of vintage Vania combined with its own unique personality couched in a well-made, appropriately challenging game. And it has another fantastic soundtrack to boot. At the time I made this video, it was not available on Nintendo eShop, which is a goddamn shame. If you're watching this and it is on the eShop, this is a must buy. And if you're a Luddite like me, the price of a physical cart is reasonable and hasn't changed much since I bought mine 10 years ago. Belmont's Revenge works for two very important reasons. It is well-made vintage Vania. It is a drastic improvement on Adventure. Giving credit where credit is due, Adventure did offer a Castlevania experience that stood apart from its NES analogs. However, it is Belmont's Revenge that takes its foundation and produces a game worth playing. Most striking is the lack of the franchise's signature staircases. You've no doubt seen that in their place are ropes, and unlike Adventure, excellent levels built around the ropes. Moving spike walls, pulleys, spider webs, it's great stuff. And admit it, you've always hated stairs in Castlevania games anyway. The fireball whip upgrade returns as well. The whip can still be downgraded, though only by these shitheads. This goes extremely well with sub-weapons, which have thankfully been included this time. It's kind of a bummer there's only the axe and holy water, but the fireball upgrade would have made the knife and boomerang unnecessary, and no one uses a stopwatch, come on. Revenge also includes a level select for the game's first four levels. Crystal Castle, Rock Castle, Plant Castle, and Cloud Castle. Each four levels have their own personality and little gimmicks. Hey, in Rock Castle, candles actually function as candles, a franchise first. There aren't any major power-ups, by the way. This is just a welcome change from a typical, rigid, linear-level framework. Doors have also returned, so expect more checkpoints than in Adventure, and there are passwords. The game has only six real levels, but it's still a great addition. Again, this game was made with portability in mind, and very few third-party Game Boy games had battery backup saves back then. Belmont's Revenge is slow, just like its predecessor, which makes sense for the reasons I stated above. This game was made in 1991, after all. It's just that the game built around it is so much better. Those bouncy ball assholes return, but their balls move way more slowly this time. And thanks to tighter controls and hit detection, they're a healthy challenge. As expected, there's a lot of platforming, though Christopher's jump is much tighter on this outing. From enemies to the platforming, the game moves slow, but rarely ever feels slow. It's a tough game, especially some of those bosses, staying true to its vintage Vania roots, but it's never unfairly difficult due to your character's lethargic stride. If you're coming off of, say, Dracula's Curse, things will definitely feel a little off, but you'll grow comfortable with it. Greenhorns probably won't even notice. It's different, but that's okay, because it works. If you couldn't tell already, the soundtrack is incredible. God damn, did Konami's composers know how to write them? Konami also used the two years since Adventure to better understand the Game Boy's hardware, resulting in songs with a fuller mix and a better palette of tones. Here's a hint, on the password screen, punch in all hearts for the sound test. This track, for some reason, isn't in the sound test, though. Ah, anyway, there's a reason they remade Adventure and not Belmont's Revenge. Adventure, on paper, had a great foundation for a Castlevania spin-off. It just utterly failed in its execution. 
With Belmont's Revenge, they got it right the second time. The debate for the greatest vintage Castlevania is probably between parts 3 and 4, but when it's time to fill out the rest of that list, save a spot near the top for Belmont's Revenge. So Adventure is awful, Revenge is incredible, Legends sits right in the middle. Castlevania Legends goes to show that so long as a vintage Vania game shows a modicum of competence, it will be at least moderately enjoyable. It's still depressing that Legends is the last original vintage Vania game ever. What a middling note to go out on. Like its monochrome kin, Legends has its own take on Castlevania and a fine soundtrack. It's too bad that most of its crazy ideas don't amount to very much. Six years between games and this was the best you could do? Clearly, the A-Team was busy working on Symphony of the Night. Never outright terrible, Legends is a game more notorious and expensive than it is good. Legends dared to be different, but not always smart. There are no traditional sub-weapons, instead Legends offers Burning Mode and Soul Weapons. Burning Mode is essentially super speed and invincibility whenever you want it. It exists to render boss fights meaningless. Think Wild Guns or Dragon Fighter just completely uninspired. Replacing sub-weapons are soul weapons, which are gathered from each boss you defeat. These actually work out pretty great, since you can pause and switch to them on the fly, Mega Man style. However, this means the entire first level has a ton of hearts that are literally meaningless, since you haven't collected a soul yet. But after the game's slow start, things are more enjoyable thanks to soul weapons that destroy every one-hit enemy on screen, or refill your health. Sub-weapons this time are just icons stashed away in the game's six stages. Collecting them all is how you receive the good ending. They are an attempt to justify the game's large branching levels. Legends is essentially a botched attempt at an open world Castlevania game, which is funny because it came out a few months after Symphony of the Night. Well, maybe open world isn't right because the game is still separated into levels, but it is certainly an attempt at non-linear level design that, if done right, would encourage exploration. However, Legends is a bore. Levels are massive and bloated with little to do in them. Sometimes a path takes you to a sub-weapon icon, other times just to some food. Symphony it's not. Heck, it's not even Radical Rescue or Return of Samus. The game controls very well, its hit detection is on point, and its platforming is satisfactory. In fact, you have more control over your jump than typical Vintage Vania titles. There's just so little actually happening in these enormous levels. And they're boring to look at too, with simple or empty backgrounds. However, Legends looks fantastic on a Super Game Boy, but that's hardly something you can give Legends credit for. Legends also has a great soundtrack. The first level theme, for example, is an excellent reimagining of Bloody Tears, though overall it doesn't stack up to its two older siblings and again comes across as middling. Legends isn't good. It isn't bad. It's fine. It's... it's... it's fine. It comes hard to recommend because it's rare and pretty expensive. I managed to get mine at a flea market for 20 bucks. But if you're willing to throw down what this game normally commands, you're better off throwing that money instead at a copy of Kid Dracula. Now the elephant in the room, the thing that overshadows the actual game. Our heroine, Sonya Belmont. Legends acted as an origin story for the entire Castlevania series and is probably best known for being retconned by Koji Igarashi when he was producing the also underwhelming Lament of Innocence for the PS2. This is understandable because during a dialogue, Alucard basically says, Yo girl, remember that time we totally boned? How's that baby coming along? Which would make Trevor, Simon, Richter, all the Belmonts related to Dracula. So this storyline was removed from the official timeline, and honestly, I'm all the way okay with this. However, perhaps due to a poor translation, or possibly just a poor choice of words, Igarashi added that another reason he removed Legends was because the idea of Sonya, a female vampire hunter, was too unrealistic and unbelievable for Castlevania fans because she was a woman. Not only is that, for obvious reasons, really shitty, what about Saifa, Carrie, and Maria? So much for having respect for the series. This game doesn't count, same for one third of Dracula's Curse! This is the same man who would go on to produce the Castlevania fighting game, by the way. And that, friends, is the Castlevania Game Boy Trilogy. Hopefully soon, all three of these games will be available for cheap on the eShop. Now, before I reach for my wine, some closing thoughts. It's 2013, and the future of Castlevania seems to be on a clear path, and that has me worried. Castlevania's focus has only gotten more narrow since I made some slightly dismissive comments about the series in my Mega Man 10 review. 
The Lords of Shadow games are where this series is focused, and this God of Vania style seems to have found a strong audience. I have heard the story is really good. My problem is that for decades, Castlevania's great evolutionary shifts did more than chase trends. Symphony became one of the most influential games of all time, and Simon's Quest and Castlevania 64 were at least interesting failures. Lords of Shadow is hardly recognizable as a Castlevania game. It's like this series has finally been consumed by a desperate need to, by any means necessary, craft a good 3D game. Castlevania will finally conquer the third dimension even if it kills the series. Now, I don't begrudge the team producing these games, I begrudge Konami for taking the easy way out. At this point, even Mirror of Fate's Metroid-style gameplay seems lazy and uninspired. Konami, like Sega and Capcom, is in a weird place. A shadow, wait, a fading glimmer of the company they were in the 90s and aughts. Let me just cut to the chase here. Maybe we don't need Konami. Maybe what we need is Mighty Number no. Castlevania. With Mighty Number no. 9 finishing its Kickstarter with over $4 million, it's easy to say that Mega Man can hang up his helmet because we don't need him anymore. You can also glean from this success that people were also buying into an idea. If Konami is making money with the Lords of Shadow games, great, I'm happy for them. And if Konami isn't interested in Vintage Vania, maybe someone else out there is. Crowdfunding projects can be a huge gamble, but it still seems like a safer bet than waiting for Konami. It would also be a chance to change the name too, because just like Mega Man, the name Castlevania is, let's be honest, kind of stupid. But think about it, Super Castlevania 4 never got its 8 Direction Whippin' true sequel. It's just a thought. Remember, no matter where your favorite franchise goes, nothing changes about the original things you fell in love with. Don't like the new Star Trek movies? Well, guess what? Next Generation is still awesome. Don't like the Lords of Shadow games? Well, Rebirth and Dracula's Curse, Part 4, and Belmont's Revenge are still awesome, and nothing's changing about that. So keep that in mind the next time something you love takes an undesirable turn. Ease up on the nerd rage, internet. Try being happy for once. Cheers.